Imagine waking up to the news that the atomic bomb had been dropped on Japan. Imagine finding out that you helped build the bomb and you didn't even know. And it happened in your own backyard. August 6th, 1945 was a day that changed the war and the world. Little boy was dropped on Hiroshima. Fat man uh, dropped on Nagasaki. For three years, the secret of the bomb was tucked inside a tiny town in East Tennessee. The secret city, it sprung up almost overnight. The biggest secret in history was kept here. He said, I can't let the press or anyone know how much it is or what it's being used for. Most of them would have no idea that's what was going on. This is the true story of a city so secret that not even its residents knew it existed. This is the secret city. In August of 1945, the United States effectively ended World War II by dropping two atomic bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, Japan. In order for the United States to build the bombs, there needed to be a secure location where scientists and engineers could work in the utmost secrecy. The Manhattan Project may have started in New York with the Manhattan Engineer District, but it was a small town in East Tennessee that became the location for the development of Fat Man and Little Boy. Oak Ridge, Tennessee, just 25 miles from downtown Knoxville and perched atop Bear Creek Valley. The popular history of Oak Ridge is rooted more in folklore and country music rather than scientific innovation. This area of East Tennessee uh, has had people living here for thousands of years. The native people of this area actually were the Uchi Indians. They had settled along these rivers and valleys and had been here for, for a long while. In the mid-1700s, European settlers recognized the area's abundance of resources. The colonists' arrival impacted the landscape over time, but nobody could foresee the overnight transformation that would take place in 1942. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the United States joined the Allied forces in World War II, and they believed they were in a pivotal race with Germany. There was a great concern that the Nazis were building an atomic bomb. The German army secretly made ready. The way of living for the next thousand years was to be decided. In response, President Roosevelt assembled a team under the command of General Leslie Groves to begin covertly developing an atomic bomb of their own. Groves had just finished building the Pentagon, so he knew how to put a large construction project together. Groves knew he needed a place that could be kept secret, that was accessible to a lot of electrical power, so he picked what became Oak Ridge. It was a rural area located very near the Norris Dam, so there was a source of electricity, there was a source of water, and a source of labor nearby in the Knoxville area, but this was not a heavily populated area. About a thousand farms, 3,000 people. When the U.S. government seized 60,000 acres of land, the residing community was immediately displaced, told only that it was in the name of the war effort. Many of them didn't have automobiles. They didn't have trucks to move their belongings. But what they did have is young men in the military getting killed. So they wanted to do anything they could to stop that killing and end the war. So they got off their property in order to make room for the Manhattan Project. The secret city sprung up almost overnight with all kinds of houses being built every day for these new workers. The Oak Ridge facilities were built with one main objective in mind to enrich the fissionable element of uranium for use in an atomic bomb. But extracting the nuclear reactive isotope uranium-235 from natural uranium was not an easy task. 
than a thousand pounds of uranium ore, there's only seven pounds of uranium-235. So you've got to separate a lot of material just to get that little bit of 235. More material meant more people and more difficulty in maintaining secrecy. In order to expedite production, General Groves and his team considered multiple ways to enrich the uranium. There were multiple enrichment processes simultaneously occurring at four different facilities in Oak Ridge, each with its own code name, Y12, K25, S50, and X10. By August of 1945, there were 22,482 people working at the Y-12 plant. Although everyone employed at the Oak Ridge facilities were working towards the same goal, very few actually knew the significance of what they were doing. General Groves had a methodology that he used. He called it uh, compartmentalization. And what he did was he assigned people to work in certain areas and would not let them know what was going on in another area. You would have a colored band on your arm that would show the security people what area you could be in versus where you shouldn't be. Most of them would have no idea that's what was going on. They had a specific task, it was compartmentalized. They were told not to talk about what they did here or outside. And remarkably, that secret was kept. From my understanding, there were a great number of people within the site that kept an eye on other people. Spies within the facility kept tabs on the thousands of employees who monitored the machines performing the electromagnetic separation of uranium, known as calutrons. When the Y-12 plant, they actually constructed 1,152 batch processes, 1,152 calutrons. So you've got all of these batch processes. The Manhattan Project had commissioned Tennessee Eastman Company to operate the Y-12 plant, and they were tasked with hiring anybody and everybody they could find to monitor these calutrons. With many of the country's young men already involved in the war effort overseas, the availability of labor was diminished. So the U.S. government began hiring local. Most American women have sons, brothers, husbands fighting overseas. This is their way of backing them up. Especially females who at the time were not in combat service overseas. They literally went to the high schools around this area and tried to recruit all of the young girls coming out of the high schools that they could get. By June and July of 1945, they had produced enough material at Y-12 that they were able to send that material out and have it made into, into Little Boy. Let there be no mistake we shall completely destroy Japan's power to make war. In August of 1945, two B-29 bombers known as Enola Gay and Boxcar flew over Japan carrying Little Boy and Fat Man. Little Boy was dropped on Hiroshima. Fat Man uh, dropped on Nagasaki. One day later, Japan asked for terms. The war was over. We had split the atom, we had changed the world. The ability to keep highly classified projects secret in Oak Ridge allowed the facility to stay open after the war. And while the country of Japan has had to endure decades of reconstruction as a result of the devastation caused by the atomic bomb in World War II, the creation of the secret city and the lab here has led to major innovations in technology and medicine great advances in energy production, energy storage, advances in nanotechnology and additive manufacturing, 3D printing. We do things like uh, work with NASA. So some of the deep space probes you see, the technology and the fuel for those probes come right from here in Oak Ridge. While the shroud of secrecy has been lifted, those who worked here during the war are still learning just how detailed the effort was to keep the secrets within the city. 
After the war ended several years later, they formed a club called the 43 Club. Now that's for anybody who was here in 1943. At their second meeting, at the end of the meeting, this man held his hand up and said, I've got a question I want to ask. He said, I had to keep a set of a blank three by five cards with me. And if I heard anybody talking about the project, I had to write down who it was, what was said, and I had to document that, put it in an envelope, and send it to the Acme Finance Company. Now, if I went for a week and didn't hear anybody talking about anything, I had to send a blank card in to the Acme Finance Company on Friday. I wonder if anybody else had to do that. About half the people in the room held their hand up. <laughs>